Hey everyone, welcome to free RBT exam prep. My name is Noelle Escobedo and you might be joining me on a video or on my podcast. Today we're going to jump right into A measurement, which is the first category on the task list. There are five subcategories, preparing for data collection, continuous measurement procedures, discontinuous measurement procedures, implementing permanent product recording procedures, and entering data and updating graphs. So let's jump right into it. The first thing for this first category, A01, is preparing for data collection. And don't mind my computer making noise. Okay, so when we're preparing for data collection, there's a few things we need to do. We need to read the data from last session, or yesterday, or last shift, however your company kind of structures it. You want to prepare your materials and programs for the current things that you have to do for that day based on the data for last session, depending on where they are. You want to make sure you have all the materials needed for implementation. Um, and of course, determine what you're going to be practicing for the day and have a plan for the session. Um, what materials do you need? What visuals do you need? What cards do you need? What social stories will you need? What visual schedules will you need? Um, as I mentioned, gather those materials. Set up what you can first so the individual that you are working with doesn't have to sit around waiting. Prepare data sheets. Write everything that you can beforehand to get them started um, before they are with you. And those are the things that you have to do to prepare for data collection. So that is section A01, preparing for data collection. Another note about data collection with me. My computer is being a little bit funny. Um, so another note about data collection, make sure you're objective. If you're writing narratives in your data, only include verbs which describe specific behaviors instead of being a poor sport. He was yelling expletives and throwing objects. Um, be objective and unambiguous. Do not rely on internal states like hungry, angry, or sad. And remember that a label is not used for behavior. And I'm going to repeat a few of those things there about objectivity. Remember to include verbs which describe the specific behaviors. So again, instead of being a poor sport, you would say he's yelling expletives and throwing objects. Be objective and unambiguous. Do not rely on internal states such as hungry, angry, or sad. And remember that a label is not used for behavior. Such as being a poor sport or he had good handwriting. You want to be very objective, okay? Now the reason that we're objective in our data is because we want everyone to know how to, exactly how to describe the same behavior. And they, we want everyone to know exactly what you're referring to, right? So if you say he was being grumpy, that might look different to someone. So make sure that you're precise in your wording, okay? Um, the next subcategory is implementing continuous measurement. Now, continuous measurement means that we're recording every single behavior during an observation. Okay, so examples would include rate, frequency, count, inter-response time, response latency, and duration. And this is good for behaviors that, a, that have a clear beginning and end, okay? And that's continuous measurement. Just as a refresher, let's see if I'm going to talk about it a little bit more down here. Yes, I will. Okay, so count, also known as frequency, um, some of these have a little bit of crossover, so I'll explain that in a minute. But count is the tally of the number of occurrences of a behavior. For example, one, two, three, four, five, five instances of SIV. Um, frequency, sometimes count and frequency are used interchangeably, okay? When you add a unit of time to count and frequency, that makes it rate. So it's the count per observation of time. So for example, 20 instances of SIB per hour, that turns it into rate. Okay, and you wanna be familiar with data sheets for each of these and how you would record. So these are good for things like hitting, kicking, spitting, repeating statements, or manding and requesting items. Okay. So we talked about count and frequency, and we talked about rate. Um, okay, one note about uh, count and frequency. It's not great for super high rate behaviors because it can be too difficult to track. So if someone has 500 instances of SIB in an hour, you're not going to be sitting there going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, you're, and even using a clicker would be challenging to keep up with the behavior. Okay, so it's not great for high rate behavior. Just a little note there that if you're observing uh, behavior for 
30 minutes on Monday and one hour on Tuesday, you're going to want to double the 30 minute observation because they have to be comparable, right? You wouldn't be able to say, oh, you did um, three per 30 minutes and one per hour. You'd want to make those um, both an hour observation time. Okay, duration is the amount of time that a behavior occurs. So for example, screaming lasted for the duration of 10 minutes. You would record the start time and the end time and how long it lasted. This is good for a tantrum or an outburst or sleeping or a seizure. Inter-response time, that is the time between two consecutive instances of a response class. So that's the time in between the instances of behavior, okay? So if he had, um, if you were measuring the IRT of someone drinking water, you would measure the time in between the sips of water. Okay. Um, response latency. This is the time that it takes a person to respond when they, after they're presented with an instruction or a stimulus. So, for example, if someone said, what's your name? And I went, Noel, that would be a delayed response latency. It took me six seconds to respond. And sometimes we want to decrease that latency. Okay, next subsection, A03, Implementing Discontinuous Measurement Procedures. So we talked about continuous measurement, and that's recording every instance of a behavior. Now this one, discontinuous measurement, is recording a sample of behavior during an observation, such as whole interval recording, partial interval recording, momentary time sampling, planned activity check, and permanent audit. And we'll talk about those specifically. So, and remember, you want to know how to fill out a data sheet for each of these, and you want to know what kind of behavior you would use, what type of measurement procedure, okay? So for whole interval recording, if you remember from our competency assessment, um, this is when you break a uh, amount of time down into intervals, and they could be intervals of five-minute intervals, 30-minute intervals. Um, and basically, in whole interval recording, the observer only counts the intervals that the behavior occurred during the entire length of the interval. Okay, so the observer is recording data for five 20-second intervals. He or she will only count the intervals that the behavior occurred the entire, nonstop, 20 seconds. And it's reported as a percentage. <clears throat> for example, Jane Doe engaged in SIB two out of five intervals. Okay. Um, and just so you know, a whole interval recording tends to underestimate the rate of behavior because, you know, in order for it to qualify, the behavior has to sustain throughout the entire interval. So if, it, if the behavior occurred briefly, we would not include that as a plus or positive occurrence of the behavior. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, partial interval recording. Same thing. We break down the time into intervals, and it could be five-minute intervals. It could be hour intervals. Um, but we, we count it as a plus or an occurrence if it occurs any time within that interval. Don't mind the noise in the background. So um, the observer is recording data for five 20-second intervals, for example. And he or she will count the interval if the behavior, behavior occurred at any point in time in that interval. It does not have to sustain through the entire interval, such as whole interval recording. And it also is reported as a percentage. So Jane Doe engaged in three out of six intervals, or 50% of intervals. And you want to be familiar with those data sheets as well. If you don't have them, contact me, I can get them to you. Momentary time sampling. The observer counts the behavior as occurring only if it occurs at the end of an interval. It will overestimate or underestimate or neither for momentary, momentary time sampling. By the way, I mentioned that whole interval recording tends to underestimate Partial interval recording tends to overestimate the rate of behavior, okay? So basically for momentary time sampling, you would set your timer, you would look up, and you would see did it occur at the end of an interval. Planned activity check. This is a variation of momentary time sampling and it is used for groups. So for example, a supervisor is observing her employees at the end of each interval and records the total number of employees engaged in their assigned task. That's planned activity check. Permanent product recording, also known as outcome recording, this, is, this measures behavior that has had an effect on the environment. 
uh, long enough for an observer to come after the behavior has occurred and gather data. For example, you can walk into a room and see, wow, there was a lot of property destruction here, and I can count the number of dents in the wall. That would be a permanent product. Also, it's basically when um, there's a product left remaining from a behavior, even after the behavior stops. So if a child is thrashing papers around the room, you might come in the room and count how many balls of papers are on the floor. You might count how many bruises are left on an arm, even after SIB has stopped. Um, you might, this is how a teacher uh, grades assignments. They count, they look at a worksheet that has already been completed. That is also known as a permanent product or outcome recording. Okay, we've been through all the A's. Now we're at A05, entering data and updating graphs. You should know how to fill out a data sheet for duration recording, for frequency and count, for rate, for interval recording, partial interval and whole interval recording. Um, and after you are collecting data, let's say you're collecting those tallies or you're recording the start and end time of duration, you want to make sure that you are very clear on how to enter data and how to update a graph and even how to start a graph, right? So you would label the unit of time on the x-axis, right? And that might be days of the week or it could be months. And then your dependent variable goes on the y-axis and that might be number of hits or percentage of intervals, right? And then you would take that percentage, let's say it's 50%, you'd find the 50%, you'd put the dot, and you would connect it to the last dot. So you keep that line graph going if you're talking about a line graph, okay? So how do you fill out a data sheet? And then how do you input the data to update the graph? So you want to make sure that you're practiced on that. Make sure you connect with me to get exam questions or um, so you can practice filling this out. Okay, more a little bit more about data. When you're looking at a graph, you should be able to see a baseline condition, which is also known as the control condition, and then a line, and then you should see the, the treatment condition. Okay. Okay, and for the most part, that's everything you need to know about data. Thanks for joining.